and Antarctica is the great south continent and therefore it obviously is south. Generally the most affordable option as well is leaving from Ushuaia, just because of its close proximity. It's only about 900 kilometres from the Antarctic Peninsula. Punta Arenas is also an option uh, where some cruises depart from, but mainly the fly cruise option. So if you're going to fly down over the Drake Passage and avoid the rough weather and pick up a ship down there, Punta Arenas is generally the point you go from. We're also really proud to, uh, to be the only guys operating a ship out of Hobart in Australia. I mean, the journey down from Hobart is a bit more windy and woollier. It's a six day journey as opposed to one and a half to two days from Ushuaia, but the journey is incredible. And the the beauty of that is, going from Australia, I said it's just so unique and you, you, you can soak it up living from Hobart with a great Antarctic heritage, going down to Macquarie Island, hopefully into Cape Denison if the conditions allow to see the legendary huts of Sir Douglas Mawson. I like the kind of otherness of it. It's very otherworldly, very astral. Given that we cannot yet fly into outer space, this is the closest I think we get. For me, I spend a lot of time just looking at the ice itself. Like, a picture like this is just the feeling of what you can kind of lose yourself into when you just sit there looking at the ice. It's more than just a lump of ice, there are all kinds of things that you can find within it. Amazing wildlife, I always say you can go to Kruger National Park and you may not see a leopard but in Antarctica we can guarantee that you'll see lots of penguins. Um, but there's more to Antarctica than just penguins, whales, lots of bird life as well, seals. If you are interested in wildlife, it's definitely an amazing destination to go to. The season runs from kind of early November through to late March and I always find the beginning of the season and the end are spectacular for different reasons. I mean generally early in the season you get a lot of ice and a lot of sea ice there so the sea ice um, makes truly spectacular photography. You get a lot of penguins nesting early in the season um, and the little hatchlings start to come out as the season progresses. So many itineraries out there to choose and it just depends on you and on your budget. And the beauty about here at Chimu, we offer a huge range of ships and a huge range of itineraries. So I always say to people, don't be overwhelmed. I think the best thing to do is to give us a call. So have a look at the website, you say you want to go to Antarctica, yeah, give us a call though. And let us talk you through the options because it all depends on your budget and your time and everything. There's a huge range of ships available, um, lots of different uh, categories of accommodation as well. I think that whatever ship you decide to go on, the experience will be the same. It just comes down to what level of comfort you want. Um, obviously there's lots of different optional activities that you can do as well. Some ships offer camping, kayaking, um, some ships have photographers on board. So if you're a keen photographer, I would probably recommend that you go on one of those ships to maximise your experience. But yeah, I mean, that's the great thing about working with Chimu. We work with lots of different vessels and we can help recommend the ship that's best suited to you. I loved um, the Antarctic Peninsula, I loved South Georgia. For me, the Chimu trip just ticked all the boxes. It had Shackleton, it had animals, um, it was a beautiful setting, great group of people, great boat. you just got to do it. It's just the most amazing place. It's closest probably going, I'd say, in, into space because it's just Otherworldly. If you're thinking about coming down here, don't think, just come. Don't think about it, just do it. Every voyage I go on, um, I like to get ashore with the expedition crew before the passengers arrive, especially on the very first landing. And something that always gets me every time, I love to be ashore when I see people's first reaction to landing ashore because there's always a mix of people on every trip. I mean, some people are on board this trip because they've always dreamed of it. Some people are on board this trip because it's their last continent they want to tick off on their bucket list. And there's always a lot of emotion. It just how the way they feel when they arrive, that, that sense of just awe 
of the incredible scenery just gets me going back and on every voyage it's exactly the same just seeing that reaction and as well as the breathtaking beauty and the animals and everything else but just to see people's reactions and and what it brings out in people is just something you have to see.